Now we want to assess the structure model. Uh, so this stage is the last stage in structure equation modeling and we test our hypothesis, the relationship between the um, constructs and uh, consists of three main steps. First, we assess the model fit again because uh, we want to make some changes in the CFA model that um, we assess its model fit and reliability and validity to convert it into a CFA model. And we need to assess the model fit again. Usually it's very similar. I mean, if your model fit is good in a structure cushion in the SEM model, also you won't face any issue with the model fit, but we need to check and report. Then we uh, estimate the path coefficients. We test the hypothesis, we compute the p-values, and we also estimate the R square, which is called square multiple correlations. Um, so, as you already know, this is the model that we actually want to test and <clears throat> you have some hypotheses here. The hypotheses are basically just the relationship between the constructs in your model. For example, H1 is there is a positive relationship between subjective norms and attitude. Then um, H2 is there is a rela positive relationship between image and attitude and so on. So, H1 to H5. Um, are about the relationship between these five independent variables and attitude and H6 is the relationship between attitude and intention. Suppose we want to test these hypotheses. So what we need to do is we construct a model like this. So we don't start drawing the model from the beginning. We already fit the model. We drop some items in the CFA. Yep, this is the CFA model, the finalized version. So we dropped a few, we excluded some items, we covariated some of the error terms. So we won't change these parts. We need these constructs that have good model fit and good reliability and validity and take them to the SEM model. So what we do is we just save as the model as SEM, the same model. So we don't start from scratch again. We don't start from an empty file again. We just save as as SEM. And now we make some changes. I first remove the, oh, sorry. We remove the covariances between the between attitude and intention and other constructs because only exogenous variables means only independent variables should be covariated. So what I do is I change the interface properties to landscape, A4 landscape. It's more suitable for my model. Then I move and put all here. Um, hmm. Let me move and put intention as the dependent variable here. And this is attitude. I just rotate them to yep, make the model more beautiful. Uh, huh. Okay, I think it's good. And now the next step is we draw the path. So all exogenous variables or all independent variables must be covariated, as you can see here. Now you draw a path to follow your research model from all these five to attitude and intention, and then from attitude to intention. So just when you select a path um, and in this object, then you click in the middle, no need to click at the edge, then move the mouse, then leave the mouse button when you go in the middle of the next one. So no need to leave it here at the edge, just go in the middle and leave it, right? Um, so following the model, I, call, I link all these five factors to attitude and intention. And the next step is link attitude to intention as well. So um, let me, let's make it a bit more, more beautiful. Select all, touch up, stick, and a few clicks, and now it's more beautiful. And now add the error terms to the endogenous variables. So as we agreed, all endogenous variables means all variables that part of their variance is explained by the model, means non-independent variables, any variable that is dep depends on other variables, like attitude that depends on these five, intention depends on all these six factors. They need error terms. You can just double click and give a name to error terms, but I use plugins name on unobserved, unobserved variables and gives random names to them. Um, just what to put it here. Okay. Um, it's a bit out of the 
screen I, out of the working space. So what I do is I move this a bit to the left. Now it's fine. So this is, I save the file. As I use, where is the save file? As I use the CFA model, so no need to link the data file again. The data file already has been linked. And what we do is click on Answers Properties, go to Output. What you want, click here. Again, if you don't know what which one to select, select all of them. It just gives you more report. But in this stage, I want actually square multiple correlations as well. It means R square. And what else I want? Hmm, I would go for... Okay, what I really need is standardized estimates. Otherwise, you get, you don't get, you won't get the standardized standardized estimates. I need R square. And if you want to test indirect effects, you select this one. But actually, I don't need now because the hypothesis are just direct relationships. So I will explain. I will give you more exa uh, an example for this one as well too later. So basically, this is just what we need. And modification. This is as well. So if you ask me, this is enough for this stage. The first three and the last one for modification in this is, I don't see any other thing I want to test now. So I close and then I run the model. Okay, I got the red button arrow, um, red arrow button. <laughs> this means I got the results. I could run the model successfully. And when you click, you get the results here on the model. So you can switch between unstandardized and standardized values. Uh, for example, here is 0 0.22. The relationship between attitude and intention is positive. And later we need to check whether it's significant. And factor loadings all have been shown here. This 36 is R square. You see at the corner, 63% of the variance of intention has been explained by this model. This is R square, R square, only on the endogenous variables. Now, uh, it's a bit difficult to read these values. Um, so I click on view text. Give me a report of all things I requested. But something that you need to check first is the model fit. And model fit based on chi-square per degree of freedom, based on IFI, TLI, and CFI, and Ramsey is good. Usually when your model fit is good in CFA, your model fit here should be good as well. But we need to report it. So you report the model fit indexes, those that support uh, your model. And of course, you report chi-square degree of freedom p-value. Next step, click on estimates. You get a few tables here. Here even you can see the list of tables, scholars. Um, regression weights is the unstandardized values of the regression weights. And what we need in this stage is just this. Uh, because we don't want to check again the factor loadings. These are factor loadings, right? We already checked them in CFA and they are good. So what we check is just these rows that are related to the hypothesis, the relationship between the constructs, right? And you can see the unstandardized value for um, the relationship between subjective norms and attitude is negative, but it is not significant. This is p-value. P-value less than 0.05, it means significant relationship. So anything below 0.05 means significant, but this is not significant. This means this path coefficient is not significantly different from zero. So it's actually non no significant relationship between these two. What is SE? Standard error. So estimate divided by standard error will give you critical ratio. So if you divide this by this, you will get this. What is critical ratio? It's something like Z score. This, so basically if it's greater than 1.96 or is less than minus 1.96. In other words, if the absolute value of critical ratio is greater than 1.96, this means this path coefficient is significant. This means the p-value is less than 0.05. You can see here. Yeah, those that are greater than 1.96, the p-value is less than 0.05. What is these three? Those are these three stars. This means the p-value is less than 0.001. So it means very significant, right? So if here the p-value, it means it's less than 0.001. And this one is significant, this one significant, this one almost significant. Sometimes I report as almost significant when it's less than 0.1. Significant, significant. So this one is not significant. Output quality to intention, the direct relationship. This one is not significant. So the first table is on standardized values. The second table here, standardized regression, will give you 
standardized values. So these are standardized coefficients of the regression weights that you saw in the regression weights table. And we already know which one is significant, which one is not. So if you want to report the standardized regression weights, you refer to this table. Now you may ask which one to report, unstandardized or standardized. Standardized means they are not dependent on the scale. So it will vary between minus one to one. So you can compare them, right? So zero means no relationship. When it's close to one, or uh, this means very strong relationship. When it's close to minus one means very strong negative relationship. And this is totally up to you which one you want to report. But make sure um, you keep consistency. If you report unstandardized for some of them, all must be unstandardized. Uh, and if you want to standard report standardized, report standardized. And what else we have here? You can get the correlations, you can get covariances, but what is important is squared multiple correlations. The first two are important. The rest are just the um, factor. These are just factor loadings, the uh, square of factor loadings. We don't care about these are about the items. So they just the first two are important. The first two attitude and tension. And we already knew this. Three, five, six is here. Three, six is we rounded it out up. So it's this means three thirty six percent of the variance of attitude is explained by these five factors. And 63% of the variance of intention is explained by this model, is R squared. So, um, yeah, this was actually um, structure equation modeling. You see, so it's very, I mean, it's compared with CFA is very straightforward and easy. So I would say here, um, let's check the results. H1 here, subjective norms to attitude is not supported. H2 is supported here image job relevance and attitude almost significant almost up to you how you want to report and uh, yeah you may say non-significant but some people say almost significant to just interpret the findings and output quality to attitude here it is not significant trust is significant and subjective norms to intention okay these five to intention are not our hypothesis in this example so okay i skip then attitude to intention is strong is significant so this is significant so some hypotheses were supported and for some of them the results could not support the hypothesis so now you can report the results of structural model uh, assessment